praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. I'm so thankful he's just a wonder. The way he brought me through this surgery is just is totally amazing. And, and now I feel figuratively I, I got another notch I can put in my staff. Amen. Uh, signifying that God has brought me. Uh, amen. He's brought me through another obstacle. Amen. And I'm so thankful. He was so gracious. Tuesday night, and I'm not going to labor here, but Tuesday night, Amen. I, I got a word from the Lord, and, and I knew it was in the Scripture. And then I looked it up, and I got it, found it in the Scriptures. I looked for it Tuesday night, but I found it uh, Wednesday morning. And it said, I will go. It's uh, Psalms 71 and verse 16. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. And that's exactly what I did. And that scripture got me through. God's grace got me through. Yes. Amen. And you look up that word strength in that particular scripture. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. A victory. <laughs> Power. Yes. Amen. And, and I and I proclaimed that Wednesday was my victory day in the Lord. Yes. And amen. The doctors are confident that they succeeded. And I shouldn't have no more troubles. Amen. With my heart. No more racing heart. It should be done with. And so I'm free. Amen. My quality of life has improved. Amen. I feel like I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. By my God. So thank you for your prayers. I appreciate it. And God is a wonder. God, he's an awesome God. Amen. I don't care what you got to go through. He'll be there. Because the Lord God in the midst of thee is mighty. He's mighty to save. Hallelujah. So I appreciate the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Appreciate the Lord tonight. I thank God for being in Benton Harbor. Amen. It's just so good to just to be back. It was uh, such a long time since I've been here and uh, I've always uh, wanted to be here and um, uh, Brother Adams um, he's uh, he's been dear to me and and uh, matter of fact I think we we hung around each other a little bit when he was out for his uh, surgery during that time everybody when I walked into plays I told Brother Adam I'm so glad you back because <laughs> everybody's who came in and thought I was Brother Adam I said, <laughs> And when he, when he first came back, I don't know if he was Houston. I think it might have been Houston when y'all came back. So I'm, I'm so glad, Brother Adam. You, I've had at least 10 people to, to come to me. And, and I, but I thank God for just being here. And uh, it's been, the, it's been my, 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 my wish to just to get here to fellowship. And, and to, I know I came in before and it was a short time. But I thank God that he brought me back here and he yeah. brought me to his people. Uh, I thank God for the testimonies that I hear and uh, the joy that I feel right now. I thank God for it. Uh, the love. Uh, uh, these two, these two preachers that are here. We we've been we've been at it. We it started off being a fishing trip, but it turned into an evangelist trip. Because <laughs> I, I certainly been uh, renewed in my spirit, you know? and my joy has been rekindled. And and I thank God, you know, because He shows you the important stuff. You know, sometimes we think about all the other stuff, but when God has His way, He knows how to move you. He knows how to bring you to where He needs you to be. And this is where I needed to be. I, I needed to be here. Need to be with God's people to fellowship. Need to uh, mingle, you know, my 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 wine together and rub shoulders together. And I thank God for it that we're because we're lively hope this today. And I look around and I. This church is just a part of, this is a part of me. When you come down to Homa, I mean, you know, we're no stranger. We're not strangers here. I, I don't even try to act like a stranger. Well, that would be uh, I, I know it's just not in me to want to be staying off and all that kinds of stuff because this is my brother. I call him my twin brother, but, you know, because this is my brother. And, you know, he, he, and I always say he's better looking than I am anyway. So I thank God that, you know, he's here and he's a man of God. And I thank God for his spirit. I, I don't know anyone that aligns so close. He loves to fish, which I do. He loves to cook, which I do. And he loves to eat, which I do. So, I, I, and then he looks sort of look like me. So, you know, I, I, I think that's, that's pretty good. God has just knitted us together in love. And, you know, and just give, you know, just, you know, and even the praises and the fellowship uh, coming together. We were down in Homa and, uh, boy, I was, 
you know, I was swinging pot every which way it would go. And then Brother Adam walked in and, oh, my God, he started swinging pot too. And I said, let him go. <laughs> let, let him go. And, I, and, I, and so I, I felt a little, a little, little, you know, indebtedness there, you know. So I, I wanted to come down and just, you know, say, Brother Adam, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate your church. I appreciate this ministry that is in Benton Harbor because the God has a, he has a light here. In Benton Harbor, and I thank God that uh, you know uh, that you are that light, you're that city that God's talked to about, and, and you know we don't want to be here. We want to let them know that we are here. Yes. We're here in the name of the Jesus. Yes. Amen. We're not here to play around. We we mean business for the King. And I thank the Lord that you know He included me in this, Sister Regina. He included me. And I thank the Lord, and I'm you know I, I tell you I, I'm I'm a shouting preacher. <laughs> I'm a shouting preacher because I love to shout. Oh, and I see I'm in the right place. Amen. And so we're going to shout this thing out here. I thank the Lord for it. Thank God for a wealthy place. It's a wealthy place. Here, and I think I feel it down on the inside. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. He has anointed us to preach the gospel. Amen. And I thank the Lord for it. God, I thank for your victory in Christ Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. I tell you, I'm home. I am home. Praise God. In case you don't know, I'm Brother Fletcher from the Home Assembly Church. Amen. I thank the Lord for being in here and being excited about what God is doing. And and you know, it's going to be a good weekend. We were with y'all all weekend. Yeah. I, I, I'm not just in and out like I was before. I, I told my told brother Adam when he took me downstairs. I said, I didn't even know it was downstairs. <laughs> but I thank the Lord. So that's, that's how we are to come together and be as one. That's the only way we're going to get out here a lot of soul. We got to embrace each other. We got to come to that knowledge of Jesus Christ and who he is and what he means to us. And I thank God for our hope today. Our hope is in Him. It's, it's, just, it's just no other hope, no other, just nothing else. Nothing's more important to, to you know, to, for you to go out here a live soul today. A live soul. We don't have to go by the way of the grave. Our soul doesn't have to touch the grave. I, I used to say this, but I, I'm not going to say it, but I thank God that we could, we're going to look down, we're going to look down on this old grave, and we're going to say, old oh, grave. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to get on out of here. Amen. I thank the Lord. Isn't that good? Yeah. Isn't that good? So I just appreciate the Lord, and I just wanted to just tell you I love you. The church of Ben Harden, uh, this, this, uh, Brother Adams, uh, you, you need me. You need Brother Fletcher. You call Brother Fletcher. And, and you know, I'm putting it out there. And uh, I'll be here. Amen. I'll be here. And I'm, I don't just say that. No, I don't just say that because God has been good to me. He's brought me from a mighty long way, and he's still keeping me in and allowing me to go and to spread this good news of the gospel and, and, and show love and, you know, and get my love across because I can have love for Ben Harvard, but don't get it across to her. And, and you know, and that'll be a tragedy. So I want to get my love across to you. I want to let you know you're my brother. Amen. We're born of the same bone, and I thank the Lord for you. Thank God for you being here and being under this load and to lift the hand of this ministry together. I thank God for it because that's, that's what we're here for. We're not here to for any other reason but to lift up the name of Jesus.
They don't introduce themselves when they get up. I ain't getting back up, huh? <laughs> anyway. All right. Brother, he's got the message. Good to be here. Good to have you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I am your brother. Yeah. Your Lord. Yeah. You're my sister and brother, and I'm not coming to see my other part of my family in the mission. Yes, sir. 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 Pastor, or elder, bishop, uh, he's all the over, uh, which means that he's your overseer. And uh, I was just impressed. Uh, I know Jesus said, you don't judge nobody by the seeing of the eye, or uh, 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 by the uh, hearing of the, the ear. But uh, because we are still striving, you see, you constantly do that, not judging. But my, my point is that when I seen Brother Adam, I just liked the way he dressed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he was just meticulous. He dressed very well. But now, usually, when people usually dress like that, they usually carry that type of spirit, how nice they look. He didn't carry that type of spirit. And I've seen that, and I've felt that. And I, I, I know one time we was uh, talking uh, a few times, uh, to Brother Alex and I, and we said to me and Brother, Brother Lee Aaron, and I remember that Lee Aaron been knowing since, uh, oh, I don't know how long, right the year. And we had said that we were going to go and visit uh, Brother Adam. And uh, uh, we had made a promise to ourselves. We didn't promise Brother Adam, but we had promised ourselves. I knew we were going to come and visit him. Yes, sir. So when uh, uh, Brother Fletcher, uh, he had uh, uh, coming up here to go fishing. Yeah. Adam's supposed to be in service. And then Brother Lee uh, called me, Brother Lee Allen, he called me and said, uh, I remember we said we both want to go and visit Brother Adam in, in, in uh, Michigan. I said, yes. He said, well, and Brother Lee knows that there's two things that get my attention. Number one, top of the list is the Word of God. Yeah. And number two is fishing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else gets my attention. I'll have a conversation with you, but that's the top of the, the list there. All right. So when he said that, he said, we were going up to uh, Ben Harbor, uh, I'm uh, Benton, and uh, visit Brother Adam. And he said that um, we're going to have a fishing trip, we're going to catch salmon. And he said, then plus we're going to go to church with him. And I said, you know, you, I, I, you can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just can't beat that. And uh, but my, my name is Brother John L. John L. White. I, I, uh, you can call me Brother White. I'm, from, I, I love, I, I'm not saying I love, but I'm, you can just call me Brother John L. Uh, uh, but, but you can call me Brother White, but I'm just known around as Brother John L. Uh, I don't know what the Apostle Paul. Uh, last name, but they just called me Paul. I know one time they used to be called Saul, and they changed his name to Paul. Yeah. So my name is Brother John L. John L. And uh, I'm uh, working with Brother Lee Aaron in um, Albany, Georgia. Uh, he and I work together uh, because we live. I, I, I live in, in uh, Florida, Palm Coast, Florida, but because I'm so far away, uh, they are, I'm not able to be at his assembly. So. I uh, go to uh, assembly there in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, in, in uh, Brother Dow's church. I heard him, so I go there. See, it's one thing about it, it's one body. It's one body. It's only one body. You see, there's only one gospel. You see, and uh, when you have that one, then whatever a, a one preaches, they, they say it'd be all one in one judgment. And and uh, 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 and, they, and and uh, so when you have that, and they're speaking the same thing, yeah, yeah. Well, then wherever you're gonna go, you're gonna hear the truth. Yeah. Those those yeah. those twelve men, they weren't divided. That's right. That's right. Not at all. 
No, sir. Uh, uh, nobody could bring a, a, a put a wedge between them. The, the master himself began to teach them, and he put them together with love, and that love is the word of God. I cannot love you like I'm supposed to without the word of God being preeminent in my heart and my mind. See? Because that's what caused me to get rid of me. See? Because self loves self. You, 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 you look in the mirror and you, you, uh, uh, you, know, you prep yourself, and you, especially when, you, when you're younger. And of course, you, time tells you you are going to get old. <laughs> Because it was, um, I think it, it was Job that said, the wrinkles in my face is a witness against me. <laughs> so when I look in the mirror and begin to see that, I can see a change. But the, but the main thing that I look at that is this, that I measure myself, Paul said, judge yourself. I measure myself by the word of God. How far have I obtained in the word of God? Right. You see, because it's not the outlook. Okay, so see, the other one says, uh, uh, Know this outward man perish, yes, the inward man yes, is renewed day by day. Yes, so yes, that's what I'm striving for. I thought Brother, Brother Fred was talking about, he, he, he don't want to, uh, um, he want to hide all the grave. Well, we can do that. Yes, sir. There is no doubt in my mind. I don't waver on that. You don't have to die. <coughs> because somebody has paid the price. Yeah, right. And we know who that who that is, who that lamb was. Yeah. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. That's it. Jesus, uh, when, when he was up, he told he said, "I came to bring you life and that more abundantly." Yes, we have temporary life, but that is going to uh, uh, last just a period of time. And like I said, that um, uh, I lived in Florida and. Um, I wanted to try to get my test, but I'll tell you how I, uh, I was uh, saved and how the Lord dealt with me. Uh, I, I was telling Brother, Brother Adam, I said, you know, uh, you know, you know, you know a lot like me how you think about, you know, foundation thing. In other words, he, he uh, uh, as we was talking, we, like you said, we first time being making our wine together. I think it was, uh, uh, what, what is it, what is that? It says, um, he says, uh, wisdom has built a house. That's right, yeah. She's hewn out her seven pillars. Yeah. And she says that she's killed a beast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, now, if I have a destroyed part of my beast, it ain't completely dead yet. But I do have him according to the measure that uh, I see that I do have him where I can mingle my wine. Yeah. And we begin to mingle our wine, and that's how I know that. Brother Adams, uh, he's a lot, of, lot like, uh, uh, no, he's wrong. We all from Adam. But we all have our you know, same, same way of delivering. And I can see that from talking to him, he loves what's right. Yes, sir. Yes. See, uh, uh, he don't like foolishness. Now, this is me speaking. Not, he, he, he don't know, but he don't know what's for him. But this, this is what I've seen that. And we all, not only him, but we all that way. You see, we, we, we wouldn't be here if it was so. We'd be, we'd be uh, uh, somewhere else uh, uh, if we didn't want to be saved. Mm -hmm. Because there's many ways out here. Mm, that's see? right. And uh, uh, it's not but one way, and we know what that way is. We, we, we're not in the broad way. Right, right. So, so um, <coughs> as I uh, growing up, and uh, I um, used to live in... Um, California, in a, a place called Oakland, California, then Berkeley, California, and, and uh, when I was, uh, I went there by way of uh, military, when I was, um, after I got out of high school, about two or three years afterwards, I uh, joined the service, and I ended up in California, and that's where I raised my family. And uh, that was, um, many, as, as, as the, uh, the ending, ending was to say, as many, many moons ago. <laughs> so, uh, it was uh, a, a young man, he testified to me at that time. I was looking for a job. It was um, in the early early 70s, and I was uh, looking for a job. Uh, just had got a military, like I said, and uh, he was working for this company, and I uh, was UPS. And when he was uh, came up to the door to deliver a package, 
I asked him, I said, uh, I said, you know, I, I would, you know, I'd like you to tell me about your company. I'd like to try to, you know, work for that, that company and whatnot. And, I, and this man, young man, he said to me, he said that um, I cannot promise you no job. He said, but if you come out to my church, ah. he said, then, you know, I'll, I'll see what the Lord do. Yeah. Now, if at that time, if you knew Brother John L., and I have always been live and let live, always been that way. Because once I see that I don't want to be a part of what my grandmother installed in me from, from the, the, the uh, she was a Baptist, and what the little she knew in the Baptist, and was telling me how to, uh, uh, from, from, uh, uh, I'll, I'll quick, from a moral standpoint of view, uh, <laughs> Brother, that brought back something that our brother Adam just said tonight. This is what my grandma said. She said this. She said, if it don't belong to you, don't take it. Right. I'm going to tell you what, what uh, um, I don't remember. My brother told me right here. He said that, that uh, um, my father, he put a $5 bill upon the, a piece of paper on the, the middle of the floor. And he went to work, and he came back, and nobody moved or tucked that, that piece of paper away, and, and, uh, and you, know, you might say and cleaned the house. Not the house was dirty, but he just did that just to see. Now, I don't remember that. I don't think that I would have did that, but I don't remember that. So um, when, when uh, 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 these things that they teach you, uh, and what have you. The moral thing, like I said, my, grand, my grandmother telling me that you treat everyone right. Yeah. And she was converted. You know, yes, and the Bible. She hadn't received the, she didn't receive the breath of the Holy Ghost, but she was converted because when she used to take me to church, the Baptist church there in Florida, I uh, was a young, young man there, and uh, I would make fun at the, the, the minister when he gets up and he begins to preach fire and brimstone, real strong, you know, telling you, you know, either you're going to go to uh, where Satan is, where the devil is, or you can go to heaven. And he just made it, of course, just, just fearful. And, and he had a certain way of, you know, that uh, those um, um, preachers, Especially the the, uh, the ones that you know are out there, I could be an understand that southern uh, accent. How they would preach wrongly, you know, and get up in there, and I, and I, and when when uh, he'd be doing it, me and my brother, we got back home. Home, that was a, I don't know if you ever seen one of those big old barrels with oil in it, and stuff like that. And we, uh, we had one. Now I like that's what we used to play with it. Get on it and roll it and roll it, sleeping so and stay up on it. But we turn it up over, and I got on top of a stand uh, and stood up on it, and he sits down. And I began to imitate the preacher, <laughs> and I was preaching to him. So my grandmother, she seen this, and she didn't take, you know, she wasn't mean about it. She came out and she said, don't, don't do that. She said, because uh, that's the Lord. Now, uh, of course, she is living what she knows. Right. And she was respecting what he was telling her out of the scriptures, reading them. And, and the old saying says, look at that description of the Bible and read it backwards. So here she was telling me about, you do not talk about that. Don't, don't, don't imitate him. And I would point out to her, I used to call my grandmother because she, she basically raised me. I, I called my grandmother, Mama. I said, Mama. I said, there's some people that's in that church. They ain't doing too good. They ain't all what they said they are. This is what her words was to me. She said, you don't do what they do. You just do what's right. She said, the Lord will take care of them. Well, that stuck to me because you know she didn't go all out and was just you know getting on my case. She always 
told us, Louis did, that you say your prayers. And I, you know, everybody know that 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 our prayer when I lay me down, I kind of forgot it now. Lay me down to sleep, you know, take my soul to keep. Well, she would tell us you would pray every, every night before you go to bed. Well, I did that. Regardless, I would get on my knees and pray. Now, keeping that within me, when I would be going out, I'm, now, now I'm, I'm, I'm a teen, I'm in a high school now, and I'd go out and go to the club and come back, and I'd been, uh, drink that, I call it ignorant oil now, I call it ignorant oil. Uh, and, and, and I'd come back, and before I get in the bed, I am high. I ain't what you, I, I, I'm not what you call because a, a drunk person, this is what I call a drunk person, a drunk person don't know what they're doing, they can't walk, they fall and everything. I, I, I call myself not drunk, but yes, I was, as you might say, tipsy and good and tipsy. <laughs> Before I would go to bed, I would get down on my knees and, while I'm, and when I'm going down there, now remember now, when you like that and you kind of start bending down, your hair starts start spinning down a little more. <laughs> so when I went down and got on my knees, my hair just started spinning, oh, and I began, our Father, <laughs> praise it, I mean, like, you know, I stand in prayer, you know, and then I would climb up in the bed. But now she put something down. I didn't know what it was other than what she was telling me to be fear of the Lord. So that's uh, a conscience there. I think Paul talked about when he was telling Timothy about different men, how that they no longer have no pure conscience. See, um, the Lord knows each and every one of us. Yes, sir. <coughs> and uh, I, as I got older, I got away from the basic, uh, what my grandmother uh, was taught by, and I'm just going to be candid with you. Come on, talk. Uh, that the Lord didn't call this man. Uh, well, Brother Johnny, oh, that's pretty strong to say. Well, let me go to the scripture. Uh, Elder Prophet, either with Jeremiah or Isaiah, but I think it was Jeremiah. He says this. He said, they run, but I didn't send them. He said that he said uh, how do you know he said he runs out of some Yeah, he, he, right. And he says uh he said he runs by the sun. Wait, I, I, I thought it was something else. He said, but if they just sit Thank you, thank you very much. He said they prophesy, but it's not my name. Now he up there prophesying and preaching, but it's not in his name. They prophesy, but it's not in my name. If they were to sit in my council, yeah, yeah and heard my words, then they wouldn't have called my people to error. Wow. What caused the people to error? Wow. Ministers, wow. leaders. And so, what she had taught me and what I know and understood, like I said, as I got, as a young man, now I'm not, I'm not saved, I am just as worldly, and I wasn't a, a good guy, but I want you to what you call a nice good guy. <laughs> Meaning that, sure, I was in the world. So, when, when, when uh, uh, people would tell me, begin to tell me about their religion and what they're in, I had come to the conclusion, and, and, and just looking at things, just judging them by this natural, I knew that man didn't make the sun. I knew that man didn't make the moon, not the stars, not this earth, not the seas, not the rivers. Nothing like that. Right. All the weather. So, Brother Johnny and I had to try to say, well, what is this all about? Because I, I didn't believe they are gods. I just didn't do it. I just did it. Now, I had to try to understand what is this all about. 
So I came up with this. And believe me, I wasn't. But I wrong. Then the saying what they were saying, I said this. It is a supreme being. And here it is, the scripture. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. So he is a spirit. In other words, he is a supreme being. Now here's God the Father, how about God the Father, who always was. No beginning and no ending. But our mind, that is not comprehensible. Because we are related with time. And because we are related with time, and something has to have a beginning. Now, everything has a beginning except God the Father. Even Jesus Christ has a beginning. The angelic host has a beginning. Heaven and the earth had a beginning. Genesis 1. And then we come now with man had a beginning. So everything has a beginning. So as I'm going along and having these things in my mind, now that was questions uh, as I was growing going into my early 20s, going into my teens. And that was one question. And that was, why was I born? Why was I born? Why was I born? Mm -hmm. And nobody at that time could not tell me why was I born. Now, I didn't have the idea, which is not a bad idea, that some people, they said they was born to do this, meaning to be a millionaire, a millionaire, or to do this. Nothing wrong with that. I didn't go no further than that. I didn't go that far. I just stayed with, why was I born? Because this is what was texting me, because I didn't go no further, that why was I born to die? I think it was that man called Job. He says that what place he says, if a man die, shall he live again? Yeah. Then Joe went right on and answered his own questions, but I, I, I'm not going that way. So he said this. He said, I went to God that I was even born and then never to see life. This is Joe. So he's seeing this, but yet and still he knew that there was a God. Now, the scriptures don't point out either way what it does. Uh, Joel was not under the law. The law wasn't given there. So, here he is, the Lord dealing with different ones. Like he dealt with uh, Abel right on down the set, the righteous line. So he dealt with Joel. Joel was a righteous man. He was one of the counselors. The son of God came with it, was it before, I mean, uh, before God and Satan came too. So, Job, we know that he was with God. And God was uh, uh, dealing with him. So, these things, that one thing I want to know, why was I born to die? And like I said, this young man testified to me. And he said, come to my church. Believe me. Like I said, I live and let live. Now, why I said this to him, I don't know. I said, now, when I come to your church, don't pretend that you don't know me when I come. Because I had already prejudged that he was going, it was going to be in a huge church, a cathedral, whatever, because uh, uh, I'm, I'm judging him what I'm looking at, how he, you know, how he, how he carried himself. And so I'm looking said, now when I come, don't tell like you don't know me when I come. He said, no, no, you say, you just come. And then my wife, we go, got the address, and as we ride by the address, now that's the address, but remember now, you see how you can put something, the greatest nation is what? Imagination. 
So I done already put it in my mind what I knew that this is what I'm going to be going to. So that's the idea, I just ride by it. Just drove right on by it. <laughs> then I came back and I looked at it and I just, now I'm seeing the address, but my mind, that's definitely not the place. So I go by it again. You know, after I come out third time, my wife said, wait. She said, isn't that the address right there? I said, yes. Like <laughs> <laughs> said, so, so I said, but that can't be the place. She said, but that's the address. <laughs> so, made sense. I stop, I go in, and here is about 10, maybe a dozen people. About 10, maybe, about 10 people, uh, a dozen, 12 people, 10 to 12 people. And they're there, gathered together, and these people, I can see that, it was, remember, I'm going to the church. So now that's on my mind, I'm looking at the people, but they were just friendly. They just were just friendly people. So when I go in, and, and the brother that uh, testified me to come there, when he seen me, I, he, his, a glow came on his face. He just said, oh, oh, glad you came, you know, so they shaking my hand and everything. Well, now, I, you know, I don't know you that good, so you don't come up to me quickly like that. <laughs> you know, see? But I'm accepting that because it, it, it wasn't for me to put up no defense, but I'm still want to know, you know. Now I'm, I'm looking around, and there was one sister in there. She seemed to just, her face just really glowed uh, 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 along with the rest of them. And she just, when she came in, she just welcomed me, she said, can I just be, be here and stuff like that? And, and, and uh, praise the Lord, just come and everything. So, the sermon began to start. Now remember now, I have heard all the, the, where they, the, 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 where the pits where the Lord got people on a rotisserie, you know, roll them around, and all this right here. And so this man gets to his feet. He didn't, he had his Bible, but he didn't open his Bible. He began to start talking, and as he began to start talking, he stopped, began to start talking about Adam. He begins to understand how that this man, how he was created by God. And was saying that through this man, I'm not gonna take too much, I want to skip over for me out of it. And uh, uh, but but uh, uh, how did this man, one man, sin into the world, and he began to tell me and explain to me the condition that I was in. Uh, that I could not, regardless of God. what I did, uh, I was doomed because of one man. And as he began to preach, then now he, he goes, really? Now, now keep this in mind. This is not bothering Brother John L. <laughs> not at all. He goes a little further, and he says, that that uh, I, I use the word ain't that that, that ain't English word no <laughs> hell whatsoever you don't go nowhere and just burn and burn then he said this he says because if you burn forever and ever and ever you got eternal life come on <laughs> come on yeah. Well, now, at that time, it wasn't a light to me, but it made sense. It made sense. <laughs> and the word of God is always going to make sense. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. If, this is the key, if I love the truth. Love the truth. See, if I don't love the truth, uh -oh. then I'm going to put up a barrier. Uh -huh. And the Bible says that Moses was the meekest man on earth. Uh -huh. That word meek, if I'm not mistaken, it means that you don't put up walls. You don't try to 
put nothing out. The Lord can talk to him. And he dealt with it. Even though he had to get his attention, just like the Lord got my attention when this young man testified to me. When I came down, I came out, I'm looking for a job. But in the meantime, I'm now impressed about what I'm hearing. Yeah. Now, here's no hell. Told me how sin got in the world. Yeah. I don't have no hope except in Jesus. In Jesus. Amen. But now, he's not telling me except Jesus like how I've heard before. Okay. Bear with me a little bit. All right. Now, he's telling me this Jesus that he's speaking of, and my grandmother had this picture, beautiful picture. Michelangelo did a good job. <laughs> nice, blonde hair. Beautiful, pretty blue eyes. That pious look. Look beautiful. Look nice. I didn't squabble with it. I just left it right there when she told it. That's, that's the way it is. But now, as we all know through the scriptures, the Bible says there's no beauty that we desire. When we see him, when we see him, he said he was he was uh there there was no fall or comfort among him. He was a man of sorrow. He was afraid with grief. See, Israel made that mistake. Israel knew that the Messiah was coming. It was told them by Moses, whom they had all they uh, I trust in this man named Moses, because Moses told them. That the Lord thy God was going to raise up a prophet like unto me. And him shall you hear. And everyone will hear that prophet shall be cut off. Yes. That was instilled in Israel. Israel believed God. They never ever doubted there was no God. They just stopped obeying him. You never could take that from, the, from the, his people. They always believed in God. Because remember. They kept using God the Father when Jesus was there. Trying to use the Father against Jesus. Jesus said, if you believe me, then you believe, no, if you believe my Father, then you believe me. Right, right. He said, because I came in my Father's name, if I had come in another name, then you would have received me. So, Here I am, there, and I'm hearing that there is no fire. Then, of course, if you ain't got no fire, you don't have no devil. All right. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> but as I went on, in this body of Christ. Yes, sir. The great thing about it, the word devil is written in the scripture. So now I found out who they thought they was talking about who the devil really is. Come on. Come on. All right. Jesus goes a little deeper than that. This is what he says. This is the master. He says, when he was talking to him, and they was trying to uh, accuse him of being, he said, we not be born from a point of hate. What they say? And we know what they were getting at. Uh -huh. He said, we have one father. So Jesus went on in that chapter as he was talking and made this statement. He said, you're of your father, the devil. He was a murderer and a liar from the beginning. And the truth lies not in him because he's the father of a liar. That's something to tell the cause of my devil. 
like I said. <coughs> now I know where Satan's seat lies. I know all the tricks of the devil. So there is a devil, but it wasn't right. They was looking for like Israel. They was looking for the Messiah to come. And when Jesus came, he wasn't riding on, like you heard him often say, in a white horse, charging. All the men there, like, like Saul, like King David, like Solomon, and all the kings that behind the orders of them, especially the tribe of I mean, uh, 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 the southern kings of Judah, they had uh, better kings more than, than uh, Israel. But they were still looking for him to him that way. See, from the natural, a natural king. And here, the king was there. Did you know that Lord, the Lord knows how to hide things from man? How does scripture go? It says that it is the uh, um, oh, the, 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 the hiding thing. But it's the it's, it's the uh, something like the search Africa, but search something for King. So, so here this is hid from them, right before their eyes, and Jesus didn't come in the package that they was looking for. But when he the things that he was doing. And Jesus himself said this right here. You, 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 you don't like me. You, 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 you know, uh, uh, what have I done to you? You see, you say, what, what, what you say, because you make yourself equal with God. Let's go to, see, Jesus always never have just like we have to. He went to the scriptures. He said, you make yourself equal with God. He said, it's written. They shall call them gods. When Israel looked at him, fell back. In the Psalms, and she'll call them gods. But now this is the key to this, because he goes on and says this. They shall call them gods, but in the psalm he said, but they shall die like men. Yeah. Wow. Now what was he saying there when the Spirit of God moved upon David and said that? Israel was God's peculiar people. He used them so that the nation can see his people. In the scriptures, with Peter and in the Old Testament, he said, you're going to be a royal peace, a priesthood, a peculiar people. They was to look at Israel so they could see the glory of God. But Israel, as who was it that asked, he made the statement, he said, you always stiff neck. Yeah. You resist the prophet and you resist them today. And the scripture said that the law, every Sabbath day, was preached every Sabbath day in Israel. But they didn't hear. So here was the master there among them, not knowing that it was him. But now, understand this. This is what Jesus said. That the publicans and the sinners were going to kingdom before you will. Now, 
Why is that? Because Brother John L., like I said before, I ain't have nothing to hide. I ain't tried to defend, uh, 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 what's that, uh, uh, defend someone or try to protect them or nobody. When it was told to me that I was a sinner, what must I do to be saved? Wow. <laughs> I did not reject because I wanted to be saved. Yes, sir. At that time, I didn't know that. But it came to me as I began to come among this nucleus of people that had the truth. And I found.